Okay, today I'm going to model mitosis, and we're going to do it with a simple organism. In this organism, it's going to have, we'll make it four chromosomes, and I'll add those other two in just a second. And so our diploid cell is going to have a diploid number four. Uh, what does diploid mean, haploid mean? Well, in this case, diploid means that you have a chromosome from your father that you get from your father, and a chromosome that you get from your, from your mother. Now, we would call this chromosome one, and that's because it's the longest one. If we had two other chromosomes, this would be chromosome one, and this would be chromosome two. Now, in us, we have 22 what are called autosomes, and then we have sex chromosomes. But the way chromosomes are named are just their number. One is the longest, two is the next longest, three is the next longest. So a few other things you should know about a chromosome. This would be the centromere, the center where they're, where they're connected. And then each of these beads represents a gene. Now, here we just have a few genes, but in a human cell, we're going to have thousands of genes on each of the chromosomes. And so this is a very simplified model. You can imagine if this is a human, human chromosome, my whole board would be filled with these chromosomes. And so this is a very simple model. So this one right here from dad and this one from mom are what are called homologous chromosomes. And what that means is that they have the same length but they don't necessarily do the same thing. What does that mean? Chromosome one from dad and one from mom are gonna be exactly the same length, centromeres located in the same thing, and the genes will be in the same spot. So for example, if this is the gene for blue eyes, this would be where the other gene for blue eyes is. And so you may be asking yourself, well, how are they different then if everything seems to be the same? Well, this right here could be a recessive gene for blue eyes, and this could be a dominant gene. It doesn't give you blue eyes. And so those alleles are gonna be found on either side. Or this right here could be the gene for hitchhiker's thumb, makes your thumb bend backwards like this. And over here, so hitchhiker's thumb here, this could be one for a straight thumb, so you don't have a hitchhiker's thumb. And so the chromosome you get from mom, dad, and the chromosome you get from mom are homologous, and they never ever meet, except in meiosis, which we'll get to in just a second. Okay, so what's our goal in mitosis? The goal in mitosis is to make an exact copy of the nucleus. And so this circle right here bounded by this is going to be the nuclei and these are going to be the chromosomes inside it. Now what does a cell do as before it divides a cell will get bigger and then it will copy its DNA. So let me model how that works. When it copies the DNA this chromosome will have an exact copy of it made. This occurs during the S phase. This chromosome will have an exact copy of itself. This one will have an exact copy of itself and then this one will make an exact copy of itself. And so maybe this is what you remember chromosomes looking like. And so after the S phase you'll eventually have a cell um, or chromosome that's made an exact duplicate of itself. And so if this is a gene here there's an exact copy on this side. In other words this side and this side are exactly the same. In fact those are called sister chromatids at this point. And so this will be at the end of the S phase. What happens after the S phase it goes into another growth phase called G2 phase. So G2 phase all of that is part of interphase. Now, would it look like this during interphase? You wouldn't see the chromosomes during interphase. All of that DNA would be loose within the cell doing its job. This is a job that it normally does. And so you're really not going to see chromosomes look like this until we get to prophase. Okay, what happens during prophase? All that DNA is going to coalesce and we'll actually be able to see it. Okay, what happens next? So that would be prophase. The next thing is going to be metaphase. What happens in metaphase is that these will, little spindle fibers will attach to these and they will line up and meet in the middle. And so they're going to line up like this. This chromosome will line up like that. And this one will line up like that. And this one will line up like that. And so the reason they line up like that is that the spindle fibers attach to them. And they're going to go from here to here and here to here. And then we're going to have atta attachments over on the other side as well. Now these spindles are going to go outside of the nuclei, which I would draw, but I can't quite fit that on my screen right here. And so there's going to be a tug on either side by the spindles, and that lines these all up in this perfect, what is called the metaphase plate that goes right down the middle. So this would be metaphase. What happens to next? The next is going to be anaphase. And so in anaphase, what happens is these are going to be pulled to the side as those spindles shorten. They'll be pulled like this. And these will be pulled. This all happens at the same time. And these will be pulled like this as well. So they're going to move to the sides. And then the spindle fibers are going to start to disappear. And then we're going to have two brand new nuclei. So this would be one nuclei, and this would be another nuclei. Now, if you look at the chromosomes in each of these nuclei, we've got one like that, we've got one like that, we've got one like that, we've got one like that. They're exactly the same. In other words, we have two brand new nuclei, and each of them have the same duplicate DNA in each one. And that's the goal of mitosis. The goal of mitosis is to make two exact copies of the cell. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute and clean this up for just a second, and then I'm going to show you how that differs from meiosis. So in mitosis, we're making two nuclei, and those nuclei are going to be exactly the same. But now let me show you what we do in meiosis. In meiosis, our goal is not to make duplicate cells, but to actually make different cells. Uh, we make genetically different cells. And so how does it start? Well, it starts the same way. The cell's going to make a copy of itself. And so it's going to go through a growth phase, so the cell will get larger. It's then going to duplicate its DNA, so it's going to duplicate its DNA like that, and like that, and like that, and like that. So this is going to be at the end of interphase. So the cell has grown, it's copied its DNA, and then it's started to grow again. But now we're going to have something different happen. And so in meiosis, we have two divisions. And so during the first division, what will happen is the homologs will come together. And this forms something called a tetrad. And so we'll have this homolog kick together and this homolog together. In other words, the chromosome that you get from your dad and the chromosome that you get from your mom will actually come together and they'll wrap around each other like this. They line up along the middle, so this would be in metaphase one, and they're going to, this actually happens a little before this, during prophase, but what will happen is that they're going to wrap around each other so closely that portions of one will switch with portions of another. And portions of this one will switch with portions of another one. And so during prophase one, they're going to switch bits of them. With this one right here, it might pop off here, this little gene, and it might switch with another gene over here. So it'll switch like that. And what that gives us is variability. And so this would be during prophase one, we uh, cross over, and so we switch some of the chromosomes. Another important thing happens at the next step, which is metaphase one. This might line up like this, but it also might line up like this. And this might line up like this, but it also might line up like this. And this is called independent assortment as I start to lose one of my chromosomes here. In other words, depending on which side they line up on, they're going to be pulled in a different direction. Now, why is this important? Well, let's say this right here is the gene for Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease means you're going to die when you get to be about 40 years old. And if it lines up like this and goes to a sperm or an egg over here, then you're going to get Huntington's. But if it goes over here, you're not. And so this, when you drop Punnett square, is where that actual genetic 50 50 split takes place. That's called independent assortment. Okay, so now what happens next? We're going to attach a spindle on each of these. So there's going to be a spindle here, and there's going to be a spindle here. And that spindle is going to, during anaphase one, it's going to pull them apart. So these are going to pull apart, and these are going to pull apart to the side. Now what happens next is we form two new nuclei. So I'll do that like this. So we form two new nuclei. And now the next thing we go through is we, we don't go through another interface. And so there's no interface, but what happens next is it will actually line up again. So it'll meet in the middle, and these will meet in the middle like this. And then it'll simply split them in half. So this one will go this way, this one will go this way, this one will go this way, this one will go this way. The same thing will happen here. These will get split to the side, and these will get split
So here's one cell, here's another cell, here's another cell, and here's another cell. So in meiosis, what we create are four nuclei. And how is this different from mitosis? Well, we've reduced the numbers of chromosomes. There's two in each one. And also, we've made them all different. And so if you look at the color combinations in each of these nuclei, it's totally different. And so what do these become? Well, in males, each of these four become a sperm. And so each of these will swim off to be a sperm. But in eggs, it's a little bit different. In eggs, let me put this one back for just a second. In eggs, one of these will be chosen. Let's say this one. One of these will become the chosen one. And all the other ones will form something called a polar body. In other words, they won't be used at all. And the reason that is in an egg is that there's a lot of other parts to an egg. There's going to be all the mitochondria out here, and there's going to be all of the endoplasmic reticulum, and there's going to be the Golgi apparatus. And so there's all these other parts in the cell. And so in an egg, you're going to choose just one for the nuclei, and that's going to be that one chosen one, we'll call it. Okay. What happens next in the circle of life? In the circle of life, the next thing that happens, let's imagine this doesn't come from the same egg. This sperm is going to fertilize this egg. And so this sperm is going to fertilize this egg. And so this is going to make a brand new 2n equals 4 fertilized egg called a zygote. And so what happens next? Well, now we've got chromosome 1 that we got from dad, chromosome 1 that we got from mom, chromosome 2 that we got from dad, chromosome 2 that we got from mom. And so we have a, a brand new uh, egg. And so how do we go from an egg to a brand new organism? Well, this one will make an exact copy of itself. This will make an exact copy of itself. And then it'll undergo mitotic division. And so mitotic division is used to make exact copies of cells. And meiotic division is used to make four cells that are genetically different. And so I hope that's